over here today. Uh, I got Ian Frazier, I got Matt McIsaac, myself, Chris Fochelle. We got a shaft optimizer 3D here. This is an interesting thing just because, I mean, we're all pretty decent players, can all shoot some good numbers, all relatively longer hitters. It depends, I think it depends on scale. I'm probably the shortest of the group. But the cool thing about this is I want to get everybody's swing DNA, mm -hmm. just look at some numbers, talk iron shafts, and talk about how we ended up where we are. So if you'd love to, I'd love to get you to hit some first, and then we'll work our way through and look at the numbers. Love it. Cool. The great thing about this is we're going to get some data from you. We're going to understand how you load and unload the shaft, mm -hmm. but we're measuring so many other things too, like 40 different parameters in terms of how you're loading and unloading, how you're delivering the club. We can pull a lot of data out of this. It'll teach us a little bit about your swing as well. I'm curious to see it. Yeah. yeah, you know, rather than being tethered to a launch monitor full time, exactly. you know, seeing another device that gives us feedback is, is important. Well, and that's what's great about like pairing this with a launch monitor is almost the confirmation of what we're seeing. Yeah. So, and you know, again, you can load and unload a shaft in num the same way with a bunch of different heads and you get totally different results. So understanding what's going to deliver the most energy to the ball is a great starting point and then take the head from there. All right, so let's go ahead and hit a couple. So what you're going to see here now is the Bluetooth. You can see this flashing red right there. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin here and you're going to watch that go to red. Got it. Once it goes to red, that's it All actually right. calibrating back okay. to blue. You're ready to go now. Yep. Now hit a couple shots. Nice. Yeah, nice strike. Head speed 93 okay. and then fours across the board. Tempo, toe down, kick angle and release factor. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So I'm gonna pair it again. It calibrates every single time. So you'll watch it go red again. Good. Blue. Yep. Yeah, another good strike. 93, four, four, five, four. So right there. Okay. We like having three just to get a good average. Let's take one more. Nice. We'll quite time that one. That'll be interesting to see what it what it reads on that one because I know that's like my my miss. What what did you feel like you did there? Uh, in transition, didn't quite have it synced up. Got yep. a little bit throwy at the top. Yep. Throw it, the face gets shut. Go a little left. And that makes sense. It, it, it probably felt more dramatic than the numbers indicate. Totally. Again, you were ninety three miles an hour yeah. on all of them. Your tempo went up by one on there, so your tempo went from a four to five, okay. which means you just. Like you said, you yeah, threw it a little just bit. Just a little there. bit, could feel it a little touch. Other than that, toe down stayed the same, mm -hmm. kick angles, fours and fives, release factor, it went up just a touch, which again, if you threw it a little bit, that means the shaft released a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. So it makes perfect sense there. But again, it's all going to wash out your averages 4.3, 4.3. We're going to get some good numbers from there. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure what you play. I feel like you play a, probably a pretty good fit in yours. But if we were looking at this right now, we'd be looking at Project X 60, maybe an LS and a 60, Modus mm -hmm. 115X, DG 120X. So talk to me about what you play and what you like. DG 120X. Really? Yeah. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. And how'd you land on that? For what reason? Always loved the feel of DG, mm -hmm. but 130 just felt like too much, just too heavy, yep. too, too heavy for too long in the round. So I leaned on 120 uh, Modus yep. for that reason. And then when the, the new tour issue version of the 120 came out, mm -hmm. jumped all over that and it's it's perfect. It's exactly that, what I wanted. What I love about that is if you actually look at the, the shaft weight of every one we recommended, we recommended 120, 120, 119, 120. Right. So it speaks exactly to what you're saying. Totally. You're, probably if you got to 130, your tempo doesn't necessarily need that heavy. Yeah. So it gets you dialed in right there. Even though you're an X in terms of flex, mm -hmm. you don't need that weight for that X. Yeah, love that. That's really good. Bang on. Cool. cool. Matt, you want to hit a couple? Yeah, absolutely. I think the one thing there that is that, that kind of rose to the top there was weight straight yeah. away. You know, I think mm -hmm. that's such a key indicator of, of how smooth you can feel it from the top, where mm. you can feel the transition. And that's such a key indicator from, from a weight point of view. So yeah, that, uh, that kind of fits up, but it's interesting that you already had that DG 120X 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we obviously we're in, we're all in such a fortunate position. We have clubs to try. We we can kind of go through the full repertoire and end up you know sitting on what we like. Mm -hmm. But this has given you know the the club fitter on the range at a, your local club the shortcut to that. Absolutely. They, they don't need the full the full range of shafts like we do or mm -hmm. like you guys do, and, and they've got to the exact same conclusion. That's Quickly, exactly right. Which is you know, the is part. the key. Then you can get to work and go you know build bridges from there. Yeah 
quickly because you don't want to be hitting 100 golf balls when you yeah, go for a Yeah, if you're doing a guess and check approach, by the time you get to the one you're hitting, you might be, you might be worn out by then. All right, let's, All right, do, let's do the same thing for you. Okay, yep. so I got it set up. I'm going to begin. You're going to watch it go red and then go back to blue. So hold still. There you go. We'll set of these. A nice bit of speed there. <laughs> 95, tempo of five, toe downs three, kick angle four, release factor four. Okay, same thing. That's my bad one. That's it. And what did you do in that? I just felt like I just, I get lazy and I kind of flip. So yeah, yeah. I just felt like, yeah, you know, that sit and flip motion. So you're 95, five, two, five, five. One more. We'll look at them all, average them all out. Good. Very yeah. Good. So it's interesting from the fitting side, there's always the temptation of throw out the bad one yeah from the fitting side what's your take on that because you can learn something from everything right, right? so you know what what makes it a bad one is it because normally what it's it's not the angle attacks change much it's not the pass change much mm -hmm. it's a hint of timing that threw the face in a direction yeah right so it's not as bad as we think and, and exactly like you confirmed on mine right mine wasn't as bad as i felt it was yeah it's actually everything else matched up a little bit but a couple of those key parameters nudge to the next group mm -hmm. so you you saw a little bit more release a little bit more of this and that so i don't think the bad ones are as bad as people think just because it produced a bad result doesn't mean right. it's, it's it's you know void of any information for us and that's it you can hit three different golf shots of this yeah and have the same numbers come through because right. you know you know it's like three bad shots can come from the same move totally well, and what I like about actually including the slight miss is if that's your tendency, like both of you said, yeah. that's my tendency. Yeah. tendency. Exactly. So you know what? You need something to work with, something yep. you're going to tend to do. If you only work around the perfect shot, then all of a sudden that miss could have actually worse results. Mm -hmm. so, true. so I love having that in there. So let's look at yours, Matt, right here. So we're at 95 miles an hour on all of them, five tempo across them all. Toe down is really low. So a three, two, two kick angle 454 and then your tempo is a little bit quicker than Ian's was you're yep. at a 4.6 mm -hmm. so what that's going to recommend for you is I'm going to pick a couple models and go here we're going to put you in a little bit stiffer a little bit heavier mm -hmm. shaft based off of that project yep. x65 an ls65 kbs 2 x so while Ian was all in the 120 range mm -hmm. you're in the 125 125 130, 130 range yeah. yeah and I feel for me so I use x1s mm -hmm. so for me that extra weight yeah. yeah it just gives me that time you know I, I, I've like like you were saying there in about uh, the 120s I've diced with that mm -hmm. from a you know trying to uh, feel something that's going to maintain mm -hmm. uh, your parameters but that fraction lighter but it really kind of threw me off and I yeah. couldn't really feel that transition. I well, couldn't I, feel I it. I took a little video of you guys yesterday and it was when you were trying to hit drivers at the same time. And it was really interesting because Chris was setting it much, much earlier. You were wider for longer. So when you were wider for longer, you kind of get there, then set it a little bit later. So in that transition, if you don't have the weight where you need it there, you're not going to know where that is as you start the downswing and are able to get into impact right where you want it. And, then my, it. and then my little muscles take over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't have that right. time and that gravity takes that position. I kind of can be a little bit over, mm -hmm. overactive. Mm -hmm. So that weight just kind of looks after that for me. Nice. Love that. Perfect. Love that. Vos, you ready for the driver's yeah, seat? Yeah, I'm ready to hit a couple. You know, it's funny that people think that we're just recommending what we have. We're recommending yeah. what we sell as opposed to we build our options based off of what we see from data. You know, we're honestly, we're analyzing that and seeing what shafts we need, what shafts we don't need. So we might not always ha carry everything because we have a shaft with that bending profile. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it ready for me? Preparing the sensor. Okay. Red and blue. Yeah, All right, here we go. Oh, so 91 in the speed, six tempo, seven toe down, <laughs> kick angle three, REL factor, what, release, release factor. factor. Got yep. it, got it, got it. Oh, 
Okay. So, <laughs> so different. Right. So different. So different. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. No, not from your individual shots, just yeah, from, yeah. from uh, the three of us. Trio. Yeah, yeah. Want to do one more and get that get that first one out sure, of there? Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You were, you were going in there a little cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, right. All right. Swing. There you go. Very good. The one that just kind of sticks out for me is I had twos and you had sevens. Yeah, and You yeah. can really kind of visually see that in just from the two that we just we just saw. Yeah, so obviously I don't have quite as much speed as these two. I'm 89, 90, 90, which is still decent. Yeah, definitely. So on the stiffer side of stiff or on the softer side of X. Mm -hmm. Tempo's on the quicker side. So yeah. my tempo was eight, six, six. I believe you are all fours. Yeah. And right. you were fours and fives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So maybe that means I just get a little quicker from the top. So that, and that's what I saw yesterday, how quickly you got to the ball when you guys started your back swings at the same time. So you set it, so effectively your arc was a little bit narrower mm -hmm. than, than Matt's. That's why you kind of got there a little sooner. So you kind of set it and then had a nice quick transition. Yeah. And you got there a little bit quicker. So, so let's see. So from here, what's it going to recommend for me? It tells me, let's see. So it's got me in a Tour X, a Dynamic Gold Stiff mm -hmm. or a Project X 6.5. So again, it's got me in a heavier weight, which makes sense because of the tempo, yeah. but I'm a little bit softer flex. So the KBS Tour in an X is a little mm -hmm. bit of a softer X. Yeah, Dynamic sure. Gold is all, all the way down a full flex. So it's got me in a stiff in that and then a 6.5 Project X. Huh. So it's got you in a one a one thirty one twenty five. Yeah. And what was the other one? Dynamic gold. Uh, dynamic gold. Oh, sorry. KBS Tour X one thirty. Dynamic right. gold, which is yeah, one thirty, and Project X six okay. five, which is a one twenty five. Yeah, but it's interesting the word you used earlier, the bend profile, right? Yeah. Because that's what it is. It's not worried about what's stamped on the shaft. It's not no. worried about what it's saying. It's, yeah. It's is there a shaft that's going to manage your move right. regardless of what's on it? That's and that's exactly where right. that is so clear and so obvious. But also with that, you're not also locked into a but soft tip stiff profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a right. bit of a range there between Project X stiff, stiff, little softer in the middle. We've got obviously KB that's a little bit higher in balance, mm -hmm. a little bit more active. Yep. And, and then we've got obviously Dynamic Gold, which is progressively stiffer as we get down to the bottom. So yeah. it's giving you some options in there to kind of, you t you try some now. Well, right? that's let's what pull I'll... the three of those out and let's actually test them. That's mm -hmm. what I love about it is there's always the like generalization of, oh, okay, you're 90 miles an hour, you're an X or yeah, you're an yeah. S. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. In, in actuality, we're all somewhere in between. And mm -hmm. in one shaft, you might be a stiff and one you might be an X. It depends on, like you said, do you need a firmer butt? a softer yep. tip or somewhere in between and this can pinpoint all of that what yeah. are you in right now i actually play dynamic gold amt okay so i was always a dynamic gold uh s300 player mm -hmm. which again that's right there in my it's my number two shaft according to this yeah. i always like the weight i always like the bending profile of it but i always felt like when i got into the stronger lofts i just didn't quite get enough spin yeah, so yeah. i was looking for something that would get me a bit more spin out of it but i demand that weight in the shorter iron completely mm -hmm. otherwise as you saw with my tempo, yeah. I'll get quick, I'll get pulley with it. Right. So I need that 130 grams when you get to the nine iron wedge, something like that. So that's kind of how I landed in that. Love it. Love, Love it. it. Cool. Awesome. Very, very cool. If somebody were to check their swing and check everything on this every once in a while, odds are some things may change, but some things aren't really going to change. Like your lie angle, unless you're making really dramatic move changes that aren't, mm -hmm. aren't really going to vary. Right. Tempo. It's kind of locked in too. Like your mm -hmm. tempo really isn't gonna change that much. Yeah. Even release factor is not gonna change too much. The biggest variance you might see, I would say is in head speed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're working out, exercising, or not playing as yeah. much golf, it tends to tail off. So it's always kind of a key thing just to keep keep it at the forefront of, am I up to date? So mm -hmm. an annual check on this might not be a bad thing. Love that. Yeah, I mean, and, and I guess not, significantly but there'll be shafts added from time to time there'll be, there'll be new product in there that maybe you know becomes one of the recommendations as well that maybe didn't wasn't in there last time obviously ls has come up there a couple of yep. times project xls fairly new one mm -hmm. you know, to the lineup so as as that you want to maybe make sure that there's not something new that's came out that suits you really nicely as well yeah that's exactly right we're always looking for holes and we see if oh a lot of players are fitting this type of profile yeah. we'll definitely add that type of shaft right. to the line ls is a great mm -hmm. example of that and the ball's now in there as well, a recommendation on, on the ball. It is. So what we're measuring now is we'll actually take some measurements in terms of 
you actually select which model you're using. Mm -hmm. So from that model, we know the loft of that seven iron. Right. From that, we know from your head speed, your angle of attack, and your um, and your actual shaft lean at impact, what is the dynamic lofted impact. From there, we could recommend, do you particularly need more or less spin? Yeah. So the ball recommendation is more or less based off of a seven iron spin rate, right. which is an interesting thing because so many people look at a ball for a driver or for a short yeah. game and yep. nowhere in between. We're taking a look at it more from the meat of your set. Right, very cool. An interesting thing from this is with all the data that we've collected, we're using it not only to formulate our shaft offerings, but also our head offerings. Yeah. I mean, you'll see it this year with the addition of the new high launch in the hot metal line. That's a direct result of the data we've pulled from here, seeing how many people are delivering with too little effective loft. Mm -hmm. We need something that's going to generate more launch, a little bit more spin, and that's a direct result of where that came from. Yeah, I think there's, there's so many things in there, so many data points that I mean, launch monitors are phenomenal. We, we rely on them daily, but there's, there's other things going on there around, you know, release points and things mm -hmm. like that that can sometimes be down to the fitter's perception, mm -hmm. you know, down to, to them to try and decide what they think the, yeah. the, the load profile is of that player where we, we'd maybe like a little more information right. you know, from that on, on those, those deflection models. Absolutely. Fitters fall into habits of things that they know and things that they recommend. Yeah. And to be able to have the data just completely ignore any habits and just put you right in something, right. to me, it's so valuable. Yeah, mm. I love it. Absolutely. Love it. The whole point of this is, is, to, is, to, uh, is to understand and see that every, uh, every golf is individual. You right. know, everyone needs different things. And, and this will get you to a point but then you need to have that human interaction. You know, yeah. you need to have that conversation with a fit. You need to understand, you know, what you're working on in your move. And, and it's a very useful way of pairing the two. Mm -hmm. You know, understand, okay, look, I know this is my fault. I know what I'm trying to do in yep. my goal swing. Now give me some equipment to, to aid that as well. So it kind of, it, it just joins the dots quite nicely from yeah. a fitting point of view. When, it talk, when you're in the process, Matt, how far do you feel that this takes you down the line? Do you feel like, this is the first 50% and the, the second 50% is, is taking it to the range and actually putting it in the hands, getting the feedback. Well, the optimizer said this, how does it feel? What do we observe from the flight? Ball flight's king, you yeah. know, so this is going to get us to a nice starting point uh, yeah. very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, then it's up to getting feedback, you know, right. human interaction. What does that feel like? Is that how you want to see the ball fly? Is that feeling good? Because, you know, what sometimes feels great yeah. isn't always right, yeah. you know, or isn't always uh, the best combination. So it allows you to then go forward and work with that. Um, so yeah, this is a brilliant, brilliant starting point, but you then need to have a conversation yeah. as a human. That's a huge point of why it doesn't just say, here's your one shaft, yeah, you know, because yeah. there's other elements at play there. Yeah. So you're right, we always are, are cautious to recommend a couple of options that all fit. To me, what it does more than anything is it tells you what doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see everything's in the 125 range, yeah. all of a sudden you know a 95 gram shaft is not going to work for you. Right. So it does a lot of uh, not just recommending, but also steering you in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it kind of deletes that going through the motions point of a fit, right? right. You know, it's, it's kind of, it can be a hazy, foggy area of where to start. Should we start 95? Should we start 130? You know, with the shaft technology now, you're getting lighter and lighter. Yeah. You have such a huge gap yeah. of, of, you know, where that individual sit. So to be able to fast track weight, flex, go hit it and go and see what works. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel about the introduction of some of the heavier graphites to the market? So, you know, there's some mm -hmm. MMT 125s. Are they making their way into the, the matrix of the DNA? Absolutely. We actually, we're, we're working on researching a lot of those as we speak. Right. Uh, direct result of what we're learning on here. Because you're right, a lot of people need graphite for reasons other than lightweight. Yeah. So MMT 125 is a perfect example of that. Of It feels like there's a trend in the industry of the better player who used to be afraid of graphite mm -hmm. and everything that graphite implied. Yeah. It implied high launch, high spin. It doesn't necessarily mean that anymore. Right. So there's definitely something to that and we're definitely working it into the software. Love that.